what's happening at Ole Miss? Oh my gosh, players are leaving. Well, turns out it happens to everybody, even those that are the best at portaling. Ole Miss has been very good at the transfer portal, particularly in this cycle. 24-7 Sports has got them with the number one rated transfer portal class in, in 2024. But a couple names, notable names, dare I say, who are going to find homes at good schools coming to a school near you have entered the transfer portal. Zakari Franklin has entered the transfer portal. I'm Stephen Willis from Locked On Ole Miss. Zakari Franklin is the current leader in the NCAA for TD, TD catches. And if it were not for a surgery that caused him to be ineffective at Ole Miss, we might be having a completely different discussion. The former three-star player from UTSA never really materialized at Ole Miss after his surgery to the point where he set out the end of the season to keep his red shirt. His new team will be getting someone with a ton of talent, and he's a really good route runner and contested catch maker. It just didn't work out at Ole Miss. Just didn't quite work out. That, that, that's a common theme amongst transfer portal guys, players that, you know, had the potential, showed glimpses, flashes, little spurts, but couldn't put it all together. Now, an injury a factor here, if Sakari Franklin is healthy, uh, do yourself a favor, go look at the numbers he put up at UTSA. Ole Miss wanted him for a reason. Remember, Lane Kiffin likes throwing the football around. Certainly, they have run it well over the last couple of years with Quinshawn Judkins, who's now up at Ohio State. But Ole Miss likes, likes their quarterbacks with, with Lane Kiffin. They want to throw the football. That's a guy that they ID'd as, hey, he can come in and help our program. He can come in and be a part of it. Just didn't quite work out. So if you're a team that's thinking about adding a transfer wide receiver, Zachary Franklin is one of the biggest names right now. He is not, however, the only transfer wide receiver name because a guy who is still in the transfer portal can be a wide receiver one. Can Franklin be that guy? I don't know. I don't know if he can, but bring him in as a two or three, you could have a really good receiving core. The same cannot be said for this guy. Elijah Badger has entered the transfer portal. I'm Richie Bradshaw with the Locked On Sun Doubles. Badger was a former four-star receiver coming out of Sacramento, California in the 2020 recruiting cycle and has turned himself into a household name in Tempe over the last two seasons. Badger has accumulated over 1,500 receiving yards on 135 catches with 10 touchdowns over the last two years. The six foot two, 190 190-pound receiver is a do-it-all player and a big play waiting to happen. What will your program be getting with Badger? The redshirt senior is a polished route runner with good speed and can step into a role with your team as a number one receiver. Badger is a future NFL prospect and will transform your offense into a dynamic one. If you're in need of a true top dog out wide, then Badger is your guy. Yeah, ba Badger is is definitely your guy because this is a dude who, who's got experience, talent, and potential. And you look at the quarterback play he's had over the last couple of years, not particularly great. Up and down, walk on Trenton Borgay, not ready to start true freshman Jaden Rashada. It, it, it has been a smorgasbord at one point in time. Wait for it. They had a running back and tight end behind center because everybody was hurt. So Badger seeking greener pastures, no surprise. And his name is still out there in the portal, has been for, for a few days now. And one of the places that I've thought about, there are a couple that, that could fit. One of them is Arizona. It, it sounds crazy, but guess what? We live in the transfer portal world in which 2024 recruits are leaving their teams after spring football because they don't like where they land on the depth chart. So going from one side of the rivalry to another, it's happened before. Jabbar Muhammad went from Washington last year down to Oregon this year. He, he was making the same box thumbs down gesture with the Huskies. He's going to do that for the Ducks this year against the Huskies next season. And, and there are certainly other examples across the country. And that could be an option because Noah Fafita's got Tetero McMillan and not Jacob Cowing. Because Jacob Cowing, Tanner McLaughlin, the, the, the tight end who, who was great this past year, those guys are off to the NFL. So when you think about pairing Elijah Badger with Tetero McMillan, with Noah Fafita at quarterback, those could be 2,000-yard receivers. They're, they're very similar in the way they play. Big-bodied, athletic, little thin, but not so thin that they're going to get pushed around all the time. 
I, I think that those two wideouts, Zakari Franklin and Elijah Badger, probably the top two wide receiver options at this point in time. So if your team's looking for for a transfer receiver, those are those are names uh, to watch. Going back to Ole Miss though, cur- one of the more curious transfer portal moves is this one. Amorian Walker has entered the transfer portal. I'm Stephen Willis with Locked On Ole Miss. Amorian Walker is, well, I, I don't really know. Walker transferred into Ole Miss in January after not playing much at Michigan, and the former three stars made his name because of a three-cone drill at Michigan that was faster than the NFL combine times. But he was injured at Ole Miss most of the spring, so I just don't know. I know his new team is going to be getting somebody with unlimited athletic potential, but I wouldn't be surprised if you heard his name on day one of the draft, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last you heard of his name. But it's still potential, so we'll see what happens. Amarian Walker, I read, could go back to playing receiver. Now, that'd be crazy. But this is a guy who in January went to Ole Miss. He didn't play a single snap. This is Caden Proctor at Iowa. Or Amarion Walker now at Ole Miss. Michigan is seen as, as the leader here to get Walker back. Would they put him at wide receiver? Well, that's a position that they you know ha- have lost some guys from last year. Guys like Roman Wilson off to the NFL draft. So I, I don't think wide receiver is not a position of need necessarily for Michigan if they decide to make that move. But the Wolverines are the place that. Certainly would make a lot of sense. There's some staff continuity, not entirely uh, across the board, but there'd be some familiarity there. And, you know, Walker has got this this immense potential. And it's weird that, you know, he kind of battled injuries and then, and then, and then he didn't really give it a chance or couldn't make it work at Ole Miss. I don't know. I don't know. That one, uh, that one is, is curious to say the least, but Amarion Walker defensive back that slash wide receiver. I don't know. That's definitely a name to know. One guy who's still in the transfer portal that I talked about previously here on the show is Dominic Williams. And there are some highly coveted defensive line. Chris Hardy from Jacksonville State. Dominic Williams from TCU. The Michigan State guys, Simeon Barrow, who I talked about, is uh, you know has been on a visit to Miami. And his teammate, Der- or former teammate now, Derek Harmon. These are kind of the, the top defensive line prospect. There, there, there are other guys at the position in the transfer portal, but Williams has been in the portal for a hot second. And, you know, schools are wrapping up now. Compliance people at universities work year round. They don't get summers off like the, the, the students do, but certainly the, these moves are going to come down. I, I would watch for Dominic Williams' name to come out of the transfer portal here within the next few days. Just a gut feeling. A guy who has had a lot of offers from Texas, Oregon, Oklahoma. There's been a lot of interest for the former TCU Horn Frog. And generally when guys have that level of interest in the portal, they, they they sift through their options quickly and decide, all right, th- this is where th- this is where I'm going. This is what uh, w- works for me, and this is a situation that I want to be in. But, you know, obviously spring football has come and gone. But with a guy like Williams, the good news is you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> you, you, you don't have to worry about that because you know what he's going to be able to do. And, and it's not a real scheme-specific position. There are scheme elements to playing defensive line, but mostly it's, hey, are you big enough, strong enough, and able to move guys out of the way? Yeah, Williams Williams can do just that. But watch for his name to come out of the portal. A couple of names here uh, to wrap our portal chatter for the day. Josiah Wagner and Ryan Yates transfers from LSU and Oklahoma respectively. One a four-star transfer, one a three-star transfer. If I just tell you that information, where do you think they end up? Oklahoma, LSU transfers. Now, both are going into uh, or in the SEC. Oklahoma hasn't officially joined technically yet. So Oklahoma, the Oklahoma guy could go to an SEC school if he wanted to. The LSU guy cannot. So, you know, that narrows your options a little bit. What if I told you both of those guys went to Cal, which is returning close to 70% of their production from a year ago. They're going into the ACC this year. And I don't expect Cal to be a super noisy team. I also don't expect them to be a bad team because I don't think they will be. 
They've got the reigning first team all Pac-12 running back in Jaden Ott. They've got their quarterback, Fernando Mendoza, returning. Now they bring in these guys in the defensive backfield with a good former defensive back himself, Justin Wilcox. That, that is a pretty solid coach to have. And I don't know how often you get two guys in the same position group going from Oklahoma and LSU to Cal to Cal. Just watch for those Bay Area trips. You never know what can happen in the ACC. Shadur Sanders said something. I didn't like it. 